adding a battery management circuit and USB-C charging to our DIY battery pack, this time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. In our last couple of videos, we made a DIY battery pack that was charged by an external charger. If you haven't seen those videos, it's important watching if you're following along, so make sure to check them out down below. In those videos, we just used an external charger to charge our batteries. Now, these are often meant for the RC hobby world where lightness is important, so they don't want to equip each and every battery with custom circuitry to keep the cells in check. First off, let's talk about the importance of a BMS. Why do you need that and why have you probably heard that term before? Well, most of our devices these days run on lithium batteries. Lithium batteries are a lot different than most other types of batteries in that if you don't maintain the cell voltage very precisely, bad things happen. Now, in a lead acid battery like your car uses, if you overcharge it, it's not going to be pleasant, but you probably won't have a fire on your hands within reason. Now, if you overcharge a phone battery, even by a few millivolts, bad things, very bad things will happen, as we knew from the Samsung Note uh, fiasco not all that long ago. Now, the interesting part about phones is those batteries are 1S batteries. They are a single cell. They don't need to have any balancing going on. They just need to be kept between like 2.8 volts and 4.2 volts, or in the case of some new phone batteries, 4.35 volts, but we won't get into that now. However, when we make a battery like this, or the battery that's in your laptop, that's running at a higher voltage, which means you have multiple cells in series, in the case of this, 4S. Now, if those cells get out of balance, they won't automatically take care of themselves. Lead acid batteries will do this. You charge it and they kind of sort things out for themselves. It's weird science, but... So what happens if a cell gets out of balance? Well, if your intended charging voltage of your battery is 16.8 volts, and you spread that across evenly four cells, each one should be at 4.2 volts. But what happens if one of those cells is about 0.2 volts lower than another? then another cell will go up 0.2 volts. So you end up with one cell at 3.8, while another is at 4.2, then you charge that battery up, that one at 4.2 will reach 4.4. And that's where the fire starts. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want my batteries on fire. So we're going to implement a battery management circuit. Thankfully, these are readily available, though due to the chip shortage, I didn't get the exact module I wanted. However, I still made it work. This specific module is intended to be mounted to one end of the battery. However, I didn't build this battery with that in mind, so I just kind of stuck it on the side and extended wires out to it. That's why the pads are arranged in an interesting way around the perimeter of the battery, but ultimately it doesn't change the functionality. The board is made up of a bunch of MOSFETs and voltage sensing circuits that sit there and measure whether what the cells are at and activate a dump load, so basically resistors and it slowly discharges the cells that are above what they should be, and then the charger comes in and charges all of them up evenly. That's the gist of it, more or less. There are other management circuits out there that can actually transfer power from one cell to another. However, they're often expensive and bulky and excessive, because if your cells are that far out of balance, you have mismatches, which we talked about in our previous video, and you don't want that. Cool, so now you understand the theory of the battery management circuit, let's talk a bit about how the USB-C charging circuit works, and then we'll get into actually assembling all this. Now the USB-C charging circuit is kind of interesting. There's no off-the-shelf solution to this. So what I did is I took a USB-C trigger board. You might remember this from when I did the USB-C powered printer hack. Same concept. It tells the charger to send out 20 volts at whatever current it can. And that gets fed into a buck converter. That steps the voltage down from 20 volts to exactly 14.8, and it also limits the current. This is incredibly important because lithium batteries have a very low internal resistance and will take as much current as you give them, to the detriment of the battery or the detriment of the charger, depending on which is the weaker link. So in this case, this is a 3 amp hour pack. I want to charge it at 3 amps so that I get a 1C charge rate. That's a whole different story, but basically you want the charging rate to be the same or less than that of your pack's capacity. There are cell chemistries out there that can take more current. Make sure to do the research on what cells you have. Odds are if you salvage cells like I did, they recommend a 1, 1.5C charge rate on the high end. Now, for the bulk of the charging, it's going to limit that current to 3 amps. 
Once it gets to a constant voltage, however, 14.8, it will start tapering the current back to maintain that voltage. And then once it gets to below 100 milliamps or whatever of charging current, it considers the battery charged and cuts off charging entirely. And suddenly you have a charged battery. You don't need an external charger, you just plug in a USB-C cable. Now this is great because I want this for my DJI FPV headset. That's the whole reason I built this. Granted, I should probably put it in a nice case so I don't have just 14 volts of very high current haphazardly exposed, but that's a project for another day. All right, let's get into the build. So starting off, we're going to put some solder down on the pads of the buck converter, and I'm going to directly solder using heat through the boards, the USB PD trigger to the buck converter. And I'm just doing a quick test here and setting the voltage to be close to 16.8 volts. I'm actually setting it a little lower as this will prolong the lifespan of the batteries, not holding them at 4.2 volts each cell all the time. So I think here I only end up setting it to like 14.8 and uh, I end up correcting that later. But this lets me know that it works. The next step will be to run the cables between the output of the buck converter and the input side of the BMS. The BMS will use this input to charge the batteries, and it will also prevent overcurrent and uh, undercharge protection as well. So it is both protecting the batteries from being charged too much and discharged too low. Now the next step is the fun part. I really should have ordered and waited on some 5-pin connectors so that I didn't have to cut off my nice battery balancing lead uh, while haphazardly working with live cables. So probably don't try this, get the female JST connector linked down below and it will make it much safer and just generally less prone for fire. Now you can see I am being careful though and only cutting one wire at a time so that I only have one exposed cable. Now keep in mind all those pads are live and the circuitry is too so you don't want to accidentally touch any of these cables to the circuit board in an incorrect place because it will release well the fire again. And here I'm just doing a quick test to make sure that each one of these goes up sequentially. So it's 4.2, 8.4, and so on and so forth. Now I'm measuring the current of the charger and making sure it is under 3 amps. Uh, but my battery is fully charged, so it actually just stopped charging immediately. However, I later discharged the battery and set the current appropriately. And that's pretty much all there is to it. If you want to make a DIY battery, you should pretty much know how. Again, last time I'll say it, because this is the last video in the series, be extremely careful. Triple check and think about every action you make. Batteries are extremely volatile, but can be extremely useful. So, thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.